this is where we show the most high, hey man, we were true all the way. And what is the most high saying here? Continue on, okay? That ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. But thou, but stock it, be thou faithful unto death. What did the Lord say? Be, be thou faithful, faithful unto, unto death. death. What did the Most High say? Be, be thou faithful, faithful unto, unto death. death. Nah, I'm just going to be faithful until things hit the fan and then I'm going to fold up. Be, be thou faithful, faithful unto, unto death. death. No, I'm just going to do it for a limited time only. Be, be thou faithful, faithful unto death. death. I'll just do it for 30 days and that's it. Be, be thou faithful, faithful unto, unto death. death. The Lord said, man, be faithful unto death, man. The Most High is saying unto death. Do that throughout the rest of your generations, man. Throughout the rest of your salvation. What is salvation? That's your, that's life. What is life? Salvation. Be faithful unto death. Continue, King. Come, and I will give thee a crown of life. A crown of life, man. You understand? The brother brought it out earlier that in, 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 in Revelations 2 and 9, that thou art rich. Yes, we're not rich in, in material. We, we don't have wealth. Like the brother said, we don't have an army. You know, it's not like Black Wall Street no more. We don't have our own bank. We don't have our own community, you know, and, 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 and good standards. You understand? But the Lord said we, we, we rich in spirit. What are the things that are rich in spirit? The brother, the, 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 the Most High just brought it through a crown of life. Let me get Romans 9 and 4 real quick, King. Okay? Let's see the other riches that come along with just being given a crown of life. You understand? And that's only applied to us. That's only applied to us. That's what a lot of our people don't understand. But like I said, even when our people, even like the brother Kasajia brought out earlier, when we have something that's given to us, that's only given to us, right. our people still got to want to put other people in it that got nothing to do with us. You still want to put the enemy in it. What about the white man? What about the Chinese man? What about the Arabs? Come on, they they people too. Yeah, they people, man. But they, <laughs> this this is not given to them. They got everything that's given to them now. You understand? And that's why our people are still in trials and tribulations. You understand? That's why the Lord ain't chastising none of these other nations. Because that's a that's a, a true indicator of showing you the most high is not dealing with them. Yeah, I made 18 nations. But there's only one that I'm feeling to the fullest. You understand? We all have a favorite in something that we love and like. When it comes down to elements on the earth, when it comes down to animals, even when it comes down to a multitude of people. The Most High has that same form. Yahabashai has that same form. You understand? So even when it's something that's given only to us, man, we still don't feel appreciated. We too damn shame, ashamed and confounded. To not even want to sit up here and say, you know what? You right, King. This book is ours right here. Damn, we finally got something for ourselves, man. We got something that belongs to us. Something that we can call our own. But no, man, we still got to bring Esau. We still got to bring the enemies, man. To sit up here and form with something that doesn't belong with them, man. You're bringing non-flavor to a flavor plate. You're bringing a non-flavor to a flavor plate. You understand? That's like you at a high school reunion and you want to bring people that got a GED to come in. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense at all. You understand? So even the gifts that are given to the that the Most High is given to us, we still want to try to share with other people. And that's what we need to stop on, man. We need to for once sit up here and take something for us. Bring that out for me, Cain, Bible Kishore. Khan, this is the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 4. When everyone has it, please say Khan. Khan, Khan. Who are Israelites, who pertain if the adoption. So wait to a minute, Osaki. what is the gifts besides the crown of life? Who are Israelites, to whom pertain if the adoption. Khan. And the glory. And the glory. And the covenants. And the giving of the law. The law, statutes, and commandments only given to the children of Israel. Continue on, King. And the service of God. And that's plain upon tables. But our people don't investigate to go and read for themselves to sit here and see that there's a reason why. Now I know why these brothers are on these highways and hedges the way they are. Now I see why they're on these street corners. And I see them every goddamn week. 
Every week I see them up, up, up on these corners, man. You understand? Trying to show our people, man, that this book is true and light for the children of Israel. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indian men, women, and children. You understand? Not even knowing that this book is for you. Let me get um, Deuteronomy 7 and 6, King. So our people, you know, Deuteronomy what? Deuteronomy seven and six. Uh, real quick before we go there, um, go to Ezekiel thirty-seven and ten. Okay. I just want to land me back on something Yahweh was bringing out. Even though we don't have that army, that government, that economic system, but are we not becoming that? Okay. Uh -huh. That's why we coming back uh -huh. to this truth. Coming, we're, we are becoming that army. Okay. Uh -huh. We're becoming that nation. Right? That's why what he bringing out in Revelation 2 and 10, that's going to be the threat to this society. Right? Because what Israel, Esau going to see, he don't have that stronghold on that remnant of our people anymore. Okay? Uh -huh. So we are becoming that. We don't have it fully established yet, but we are all becoming that. No, you know, let's understand what we in this truth for. Okay? Yeah. We are in this truth to come back to that nation, to come back to that army, to come back as a people. Okay? Yeah. So that's what we building here. Right? We're building back our nation through the elect, through the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and through the word of the Most High. That's how the nation is being built back. Okay? Yeah. So when we go out there and we, um, when we teach the gospel, we are that spiritual army. Right, we're not we're not putting hands and feet on Esau and the nations, not yet. Right, but we are that when brothers are on the line, that's spiritual warfare. Right. Okay? Right. So we are becoming that army. The 144,000 gonna be that army. Mm -hmm. Like I tell you in Joel the second chapter. So although it's not here, we are becoming that. We're in the process of becoming that. Okay? Right. Ezekiel 37 and 10. Read. Khan, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 10. When everyone has it, please say Khan. Khan. Con. So I prophesied as he commanded me. Right, we prophesied the most I commanded us. Right. They really think we just go out there, them just guys just go on the street corner and yell and scream. Most of them guys don't have education. They come out of jail, right? They don't they don't know how to read. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they just hate the white man because they're losers. God. <laughs> they got them funny looking clothes on, go get a job. But they ain't got no job, so they just mad. Cut. Yeah. Most of the time we teach it on the Sabbath. People work Monday through Friday most of the time. Who said nobody don't have a job? Yeah. Or a business or a legitimate hustle. Right? But automatically, oh, they just angry on the street corner because they ain't got no light. They just mad at the system. Cut? Yeah. Right? So a lot of times is that stereotype because brothers are out there. What what we do is not really looked upon by the average person as anything legitimate. You just some black or Hispanic or Native American man on the corner just yelling because you angry. Well, oh, 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 see, he just, he, 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 he don't have a, uh, uh, he didn't get no education, so he's mad at everybody. No. Brothers went to college. Brothers got degrees and different things on that. That's nothing. When you go, when you uh born into this world, if you had parents in a home, they teach you. You got to do what you got to do to survive in this world. So that's nothing. That's like common sense. You got to get out there, you got to get a trade, you got to get a job, you got to start a business. That's nothing. We like, look, all that, we still want power. We want rulership. We want our nation back. You're talking about a little job or a career. That's, the, that's just how you survive in this society. But that's how petty-minded our people are. They think that's their kid. This is their kingdom. Oh, yeah, I make six figures and I've been working there for 20 years. I'm doing good. No, I want the kingdom. I want... Yahweh said in my father's house there are many mansions. I want to rule over uh, over planets and stuff, God. Uh, uh, I want to get on a chariot made out of gold and go pull up on Joshua on his planet. God? Uh, you know what I'm saying? With his uh, 100,000 Edomite slaves. God? Uh, you think I was a happy with a career, a six-figure career, God? Uh, we want to be a nation again and rule the earth and the universe, God? Uh, right, you know what? 
Kan. And the breath came into them. So when we prophesy, the breath come into our people. The breath is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The law, statutes, and commandments is spiritual. It's all spiritual first. We put life back into our people because this society is death. Kan? Yeah. Right, go ahead. And they lived and stood up upon their feet. See, we're living now. We're living in Yahweh Shah. We alive. Right, we dead to this world, and now we alive in Yahweh Shai. Right, go ahead. An exceedingly great army. And we're becoming an exceeding great army. Okay? Right. So we are becoming an army. Give me Luke 1 and 17. All right, Luke chapter 1, verse 17. Okay. This is the book of Luke, chapter 1. And verse 17, when everyone has it, please say, Khan. Khan. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. Right. So John the Baptist came in the spirit and the power of Elias. Like we, we was taught that was the regeneration of uh, John the Baptist was the regeneration of um, Elias. Elijah, Salakia, right? Some don't believe that, but that's what we was taught. That's what we still embrace. Right, good. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. That's what we're doing now. We're turning the hearts, the minds of our children to the fathers. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right, go ahead. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Right, we're trying to get our people to stop breaking the law and keep the law. It's common sense. Obey the Lord and be blessed. Disobey the Lord and be cursed. Right, go ahead. Uh, to make ready. To do what? To, to make, make ready. ready. What are we doing? To, to make, make ready. We're making ready, right? We're becoming that army. We're becoming that nation. Right? We we ain't going to need this economic structure because we're going to rule everything. We're going to have the earth and the universe. So we're going to have that built also. We're going to have all the wealth we can imagine, man. They're going to talk about, I, I make six figures. I'm doing good. Right? We're going to have the earth and the universe, man. Khan, you worried about this little, that's just how you survive here. That's good. You make a little grip here, you can live okay. That's good, but that's just to survive in his kingdom. That ain't that ain't your kingdom. That ain't the end all be all. Right? Come on. Khan, to make ready a people. Well, to make ready a people. Come on. Prepared for the Lord. That's what we're doing. We're becoming a nation ready for Yahweh Shah to come and deliver us. Khan? So we are, I just want to bring some more elaboration into what Yahweh was bringing out. We are becoming that. We ain't doing this for nothing. Okay? Yeah. Right, go from there to 2 Timothy 2 and 1. So we are becoming that army and that nation. That's why the Egyptians put us in bondage. When you read Exodus, all right, every year during the Passover season, you should read the book of Exodus. I mean, you can read it any time of the year, but, you know, it's a good time of the year throughout the seven days or before the Passover. You can read the story over and over so you can get that memorial. Okay? Uh, right, read um, 2 Timothy 2 and 1. Khan, this is the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 1. When everyone has it, please say Khan. Khan. Uh, Khan. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Hamashiach Yahweh Right, be strong in his grace, man, because the Most High, he didn't have to have grace on us. So be strong in that grace. You say, look, man, I came from filth, from sin, from evil. And the Most High had favor on me. Right? Um, uh, the rapper from New York that died. Big rapper. Um, Rough Riders. Um, DMX. DMX used to break down and cry on stage. Because he said, I, DMX was always spiritual. That's why before he died, he, he listened to the brothers in Atlanta. He got taught by Shower Partner. God, shout out to HR Atlanta. But he, he used to break down on stage and cry. Because he said, I remember robbing people with dogs. I remember all the foul stuff I did. And now I'm a multimillionaire with all this success. God bless me. I'm not worthy. He used to break down and cry and say, God, why are you giving us to me? I'm, I've been evil. I've been wicked. I've been dirt. I've been, I was robbing people with dogs. Your problem with a dog is worse than a damn right? dog, too. <laughs> right? And then he, the dog is barking, and DMX barking at the person at the same time and robbing them. <laughs> You'll give up your jewel. <laughs> but he used to say, you know, sometimes, even in this truth, we might feel like that. Like, damn, I know the dirt that I did. And the most I still have mercy on me. 
So that's why you got to be strong in his grace because he didn't have to give us grace. So when he gave it, you got to be strong in it. Like, damn, you know, that's why we do the work so hard because some of us know where we came from. You know, uh, it tell you when you turn a sinner from their way, um, when you turn them from the error their way, I'm paraphrasing, you hide a multitude of sins. Con? So that's what we like. Man, every week we got to go to camp, man. I'm, <laughs> man, I woke up another brother. That's 10 sins off of me, God. Because you know, all of us, you know, some of us came from some crazy lifestyles and sins that we were doing. And you think sometimes, like, damn, the most I have mercy on me, I should have been dead years ago. All the foul stuff I was doing, the foul stuff I was involved in. You know, everybody's background is different. But that's why you got to be strong in that grace. Come on. Con, verse 2. And the things that thou has heard of me among many witnesses, in the same commit thou to faithful men. Come on. Who shall be able to teach others also? You know, y'all know the saying, each one teach one. That's right. The right. things that was committed to us, we go out there and teach faithful men also. Mm -hmm. What it say in Ezekiel, go out there and find those that sigh and cry mm -hmm. for all the abominations. We got to find other people that are sick of this wicked kingdom. Well, yeah, man, we this this brother gonna be in the truth soon. That sister gonna be in the truth. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because they see through the spirit something ain't right with this society. What? Them brothers are right, man. That's the same stuff I be thinking. Con? Con. Right, come on. Con. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Hamashiach Yahushua. We gotta endure hardness as good soldiers. So this is an army the most high raising up. Con? Uh, a spiritual army first, and when that time comes, it's going to get physical. Con? Yeah. Through the power of the Yahweh Shah and the angels, of course, we're going to take down the nations with that yeah. spiritual power. Con? Yeah. So you got to endure hardness as a good soldier. So we are becoming that army in Yahweh Shah. We know it? Uh, no man that war entangle himself with the affairs of this life. But right. if you're a spiritual warrior in Yahweh Shah, you don't get caught up in the affairs of this life, man. Like, like, look, I did this world. I just survive in this world. I do what I got to do to survive in this world. But my main thing is I'm caught up in your how shy and doing this work, man. Yeah. When you come into this truth, this should become your life first then everything else second. Right. We know you got to you got to go to work. You got to pay your bills. You got to deal with your family. Uh, if you're a wife, you got to deal with your husband. You're a husband, you got to deal with your wife. You got to deal with things in this society to maintain. But your life should be this truth first. Con? Yeah. You should be excited that the Passover is coming up. Right? You should be excited that the feast days is coming up. Excited to see the brothers and sisters. Excited to do the work. Con? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Brothers, doing the work is fun to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dealing with them different spirits. What we had last week, a, a, a Gadite Muslim with a baby by a white man. A, no, a Gadite Philly Muslim. You got to add Philly in there, <laughs> right? With the, had a baby by Esau. So what the hell? What was her name? Of? Agatha? Yeah. Right, she was pronouncing Agatha, but I said, no, it's Agatha. <laughs> right, but, you know, she took some information. Hopefully we hear from her. Con? Yeah. Uh, a Philly Muslim guy right, that had a baby by the white man. Yeah. The hell is going on out here? Con? Yeah. So, you know, but it was, you know, we, we, we eventually got to the sister. And she was She was coming along. Then the brother, you know, John 3, 16. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But wait, but wait a minute, brother. That's what I'm saying. No, we know what you're saying. Where's that white man or that white woman somewhere? Con? Yeah. But so we make it, you know, Jake, man, we got that swag. You know, we make it interesting. We make it, it's, it's, it's serious, but we add a little funniness to it, a little swag to it, a little humor to make it interesting. Con? Yeah. Right? Read on. Con. And he... Saki, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. To be a what? To Jeez. be a soldier. So we are army, right? This is an army. Kind? Uh -huh. That the Most High is raising up. He chose you. Uh, they had a gospel song like that. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Kind, right? Even the Christians know that. Kind? Uh -huh. You're a spiritual soldier and you're in a spiritual army right now. Right? When we go out there, that's spiritual warfare. That's why sometimes it can get physical because it's it's war, right? The, the demons are coming up against the truth. So when they can't do nothing to the truth, they want to get physical. They want to get mad and get physical. Right. Remember that time we came to Philly and the Christians was out there? Uh, that big uh, Christian and dudes was all smothered up like he was going to do something. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. That's because, what, and we didn't really even engage him like that. 
But that old Philly niggerism came out of him like he was going to intimidate somebody. And that's what Jake do. When Jake can't get you with nothing else, oh, beat these niggas up. Uh, 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 thug these niggas. And that ain't working, son. Nobody care. You know what I'm saying? He was popping off and he didn't even realize uh, DMV was standing right behind him. You know, they had just pulled up. You know what I'm saying? That's what Yakutas was still in the camp. Karatas out, I think, uh, y'all was out. They standing right bottom. Dude, you about to be finished with them three. Uh, you make a move on the camp, your throat might be slit. Uh, it, you know, it is what it is, but uh, brothers going to defend their brothers. Okay? Uh, Brother, calm down. If you that upset, take a walk back. It's just that. Let's, let's battle in doctrine. But see, Jake, yeah, I mean, tough guy, these niggas, and you ain't scared nobody with that. Uh, the scriptures say, like you read in Revelation 2 and 10, we give our life for this thing, man. In uh, your shot. As long as we know we stand up for truth, you gonna kill us, you gonna kill us. Right? Or we gonna keep teaching. That happened in our Times Square one time. And Jake, Jake bluffed us. The man had a brush. But he bluffed, he bluffed like he had a gun. He said, yo, anybody move, I'm, I'm, I'm about to shoot up. And we stood firm. Yo, pull out your gun and clap. We're gonna stand right here, firm. But right? then a, a Yahweh been Yahweh Israelite, the most I put the spirit on him, and he's like, yo, I'll break your neck right now. These were, mm. these are my Hebrew brothers. You ain't going to do nothing to them. I break your, he was, you know, them Yahweh's, they martial arts and they was known for killing down in Florida. They was known for bringing back heads to Yahweh, being Yahweh and everything. Yeah. So he told the dude, yo, I'll kill you with my bare hands right here. He's like, Lee, these, these are my Hebrew brothers. I don't care if we believe in something different. These are my Hebrew brothers. You ain't going to do nothing to them. And the man had a brush in his back pocket. Damn. And then me and Tarah rolled up on him. We seen him. Me and Tarah ran, ran up on him on Fulton downtown. We seen him. And I ran up to him and I patted him down and said, you got your gun on you? Oh, oh your brush. Oh, your brush on you. And he was shook. He was shook because we had him slipping. But me and Tarah looked up and said, brother, we ain't going to do nothing to you. But stop with that bluffing. You would have been dead in the street. You would have been dead in the street. He was shook. He had his work uniform on. He was shook because he was like, that's them dudes. He thought we was going to jump him, but... Said, brother, we, we had just came out of from being locked up, too. We got locked up in camp for fighting somebody. We just came out the tombs, and we saw him. That's the dude that was bluffing us with the gun. I mean, the um, brush. <laughs> wow. So we done put out, and other stories I could tell, man. You know, but like, yo, if you, you going, you going, you going to bust your gun, bust your gun, bro. We stand in front for you. I was shocked. We didn't say nothing wrong. He was with two Edomite women, and we was telling them, brother, you can't be with them. You know, I think he was pimping them, but still. You know what I'm saying? That's true. And he got mad and was like, yo, 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 back up everybody. Yo, I shoot this whole block up. Still right there. What you going to do, bro? And I told the dude straight up, not to be proud or boastful. I said, listen, you going to bust your gun or we going to keep teaching? Which one is it? No, 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 no. I ain't, I ain't going to, but nah. And then the Yahweh dude got on him. And dude had a brush in his back pocket, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bluffed us, right? Yeah, man. But um, these I could I could tell stories for days, man. We get a bottle and be here all night. <laughs> but that's what we've been through out there for teaching the gospel. A lot of people won't do that, but through the spirit, we see the word got to go out, no matter what. That everybody is not built for this. That's what the Lord said. Many are called, few are chosen. Con, read on. Con, verse five. And if a man also strive for masteries, come on. Yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Right, so we got to strive for the mastery, man, so we can get that crown when Yahweh shall come. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Right, go from there to Exodus 12 now. So we're going to become those armies in Yahweh shall come. Uh -huh. Exodus 12. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get a, 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 a precept. And then um, they can read a few. Yeah. Um, but we ain't going to read the whole thing for the okay. sake of time. Okay. Um, go to Exodus 12 and 51, last verse. Okay. Uh, Con. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 51. When everyone has it, please say con. 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 And it came to pass 
the same sake, the self same day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their army. See that we was in rank and file back then, Khan. So the Amer remember America's the second Egypt, so we coming out of here as an army. Khan. Back then it was on foot. We're gonna be on the chariots now, but we're gonna be in rank and file. We're gonna be in order when your shining angels come. Khan? Khan. Right? So we 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 have been coming at army in your shot right now. Right? By Shema Mashiach. So I just want to do like a little quick lesson on what you know Yahweh Shah was bringing out about we are I mean Yahweh we are becoming that army Khan? Khan. so go to Exodus 12 and 1 now we're just going to get a couple of just random Passover scriptures to put the spirit out and um, we'll close it out All right. Exodus 12 we're just going we're not going to read the whole thing start at 1 let me jump around a little bit Con, this is the book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse 1. Will everybody have it? Say con. con. So the Passover is what? The Passover, remember, is about coming out of Egypt. It's about remembering the death as well as the birth of Yahweh Shai. Not a birthday celebration, but Luke 2. Y'all can read that on your own. Luke 2, the latter verses tell you he was born around the Passover. Around the Passover season. Some scholars try to pinpoint the exact date the scriptures don't say. But <clears throat> somebody was on a comment board. Some brother was with a, five paragraphs. The Passover was in March, brother. Y'all got the wrong date. Because Christ was born on the, the Roman 8. Oh, brother. Okay, brother. Oh, thou scholar of mine. I'm not reading all that, brother. <laughs> Y'all, y'all, y'all keeping the pass over the wrong time, brother. It was March twenty second and a half, cause the, <laughs> the Roman calendar of Christ's birth. All right, brother. I'm not reading all that. Con. Well, we know it's Passover season. If we got the date wrong, may the Most High have mercy on us. Con. Um. So the Passover is about judgment, also. Con. Remember, there was ten plagues. The final plague was the killing of the firstborn. Khan? Yeah. So the Passover is also about we celebrate judgment. And and is the show is nothing wrong with celebrating judgment. Khan? Yeah. Because uh uh the Egyptians wouldn't let us go. The most I kept heart in their heart, so he kept judging them. And that was all to show his power. Khan? Yeah. Exodus twelve and one. Khan, it's the book of Exodus, chapter twelve, verse one. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be until you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Right, so we know this is our new year. All right, April 7th at even was our new year. Some had different dates. It's all good. It's in the same season. Most of it was about a month apart. It's all good. Go ahead. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take them... Salakia, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for in house. Go ahead. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count. For the lamb. Right, so you're supposed to get enough lamb that, you know, you can eat up that night for the amount of people that, uh, you know, attend the Passover or, or your home or whatever the case may be. Somebody was asking, can they take the lamb home? No, you cannot. <laughs> That's why it says it's important because it says get an amount like, you know, that was, uh, was there any left over at the Passover or they eat it up? They ate it all. Con, 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 con. All right, so we had enough. <laughs> right? Um, that's why it stresses that, because it's supposed to be eaten in that night. All right, go ahead. Your lamb shall Cats be... Cats want to get some, some, some rice and some beans <laughs> the next day and sop it up with some unleavened bread and, and warm up their leftover lamb, right? Just cook some fresh lamb for all that. Read on. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year. Right, so like when we go to the slaughterhouse, they know most of the time it's Ham or Ishmael or Elam because a lot of Muslims own the slaughterhouses. But they know because they get that law from us that it's supposed to be a year or older. Right, go ahead. Ye shall take it out from the sheep 
or from the goats. Right, it could be from the um, sheep or the goats, right? That's why, you know, last couple of years we get a little bit of both. Go ahead. Verse 6, and, and ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Right, so you see a lot of the brothers in, in camps or whatever, some of them was posting them, killing the lambs and everything, trying to get just back close to the law as possible. Go ahead. Verse 7, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two sides, on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. Go ahead. Verse 8, and they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and the bitter herbs and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Verse 9. Eat not of it raw, mm. nor sodden, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire. His head and his legs, and with the pertinence, pertinence, go pertinence ahead. thereof. Go ahead, meaning most of the body. Go ahead. God, verse 10. And ye shall let nothing of it remain. Salakia. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Go ahead. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. Right. So you can't take none home and, and warm it up with some collard greens and macaroni and cheese. All right. Go ahead. Come. Verse 11. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Right. So you're supposed to have your, your loins girded, shoes on your feet, staff in your hand. Right. Eat in haste. is the Lord's Passover. Go ahead. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. All the gods meaning the leaders. There was no respect to persons. No matter what level you were on in Egypt, the Most High was killing the firstborn in that household. Khan? Khan. Right, go ahead. Khan. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And also, when you check it out, when you go into the history, each plague was like a mockery of an e a different Egyptian god. Khan? Because the Egyptians had all kinds of different gods. They worshipped frogs and flies and cattle. So each plague was like a mockery of of the uh, ten, the uh, different Egyptian gods. Khan? Khan. Right, go ahead. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be unto you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Right, so verse 13 is where the um, feast day gets its name from, Passover. The deaf angel would pass over the Israelite houses because we obeyed the Most High and put the blood on the side post on the lintel. Go ahead. Time. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it of like it. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. For how long? Forever. forever. Right. So that's the verse you use when people say we. We're not supposed to be keeping a Passover in, uh, outside of Jerusalem. They do error not knowing the scriptures or the power of the Most High. Karin? Karin. Right, come on. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. So seven days ye shall eat unleavened bread. And tonight would be the seventh day at even. Tonight coming in at sundown is the seventh day. I know a lot of brothers are celebrating tomorrow, but no disrespect, that's a miscalculation. Unless you started on the 22nd, not the 21st. But I, that's why I did the live yesterday. You, when you show an account, you, the sixth night at even goes into the seventh night. Tomorrow will actually be the eighth night. Khan? Khan. Not knocking anybody. It's all good. Go ahead. Khan. Even the first. Oh, Salakia, some congregations believe that the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread are two separate days. They believe the first night is the Passover, and then seven days after that is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's where they get eight days. But what do we eat on the first night of the Passover? 
Unleavened bread, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. Give, go to Luke 22 and 1. The first yeah. night of Passover is also the first night of unleavened bread. God? God. God. It's common sense. Right? But the way it's worded is tricky. Like I said, not knocking anybody is just, it's tricky the way it's worded. So, for many years, and even now, a lot of Israelite congregations believe the Passover is actually eight days. But it's not. It's seven days. Right? And the first day is the first day of unleavened bread. Oh. Right? Read that. Luke oh. 22 and 1. This is the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 1. When everyone has it, say, Come. 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 Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is the Passover. Come. Oh. Come. Right? So... You know, like I said, not knocking anybody. We don't want to do the, the doctrine, pride, challenge, debate. We better, but, right? Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But with all your wisdom, get understanding. God, and I'm going to leave that right there. Oh, well, you trying to say HOI got the best dates? No. Right? <laughs> Go back. Um, HOI got it perfect. It's eight days, not seven. Go back to um, Levitic, I mean, Exodus 12, 15. Come book of exodus chapter 12 verse 15 when everyone has it say come come seven days shall ye eat a leaven bread even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your house right so to the best of your ability you put you get rid of the, uh, any foods or any thing in your home with with leaven right go ahead for whosoever eateth leaven and it's just leaven that's you don't have to throw out the watermelon uh -huh. right? <laughs> watermelon don't have leaven in it right <laughs> Israel could be over righteous. I'm throwing all my food away. It's a piece of crumb of the bread got on top of the wall. All right. Now, somebody asked me, um, should they throw out their medicine? I was like, huh? If, if your medicine got left in it, check the ingredients. I don't know. I don't know what the hell Esau put in his medication. But I was like, you, you need your meds, you know? I mean... I know a lot of Israel don't like to deal with the meds, and you know I'm 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 herb herb I'm a herbalist. I don't take Esau sort of medicine. You better know what the hell you're doing before you die, uh -huh. right? Everybody's an herbalist and don't know a damn thing about herbs, right? You get off of your meds and get on some herbs and drop dead. You got to use wisdom. Uh -huh. Know what you're doing. If you ain't a doctor, Sebi, stay on, stay, do what you got to do. But it's just leaven. That's it. Con, uh. if in doubt, leave it out, you know, but if it don't have no leaven in it, you can leave it in your house. Con, uh. right, go ahead. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. So this is how serious the most I took it, right? Go ahead. And in the first day, there shall be a, a holy convocation. That's what we had um, last Sunday night, the 21st, a holy convocation. And was it a holy convocation? Yeah. Oh! Oh! That was the uh, Philly, the PPP Passover, the Philly picture Passover. God. I think I took a thousand pictures that night. I see y'all was teasing me. He said, well, Elder, that's what you said. You said it. Don't nobody leave without taking a picture. So I got to have the brothers, man. I kind of missed some of the concert taking so many damn pictures. Good. So we got to have a re redo of the concert, man. Maybe at the rebuke or something. They go out to perform on them new job. We went to the studio and everything. Miss half of the damn concert taking pictures. <laughs> oh, one more Elder. Oh, my God. Like, can you get, get one with the family? Actually, y'all said, Elder, that's what you said. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for, right? Yeah. I said, I looked on the social. I said, God damn. And that ain't even all of them. That's yeah. not even all of them. What everybody was posting. And I was like, damn. Now they still post the ones I forgot about. Kern? Yeah. Right, go ahead. And in the seventh day. That's tonight. Tonight is the seventh day. The closing of the sixth day coming into the seventh at even. Kern? Oh. Right, like I said, it wouldn't be tomorrow night, according to our calculation, because that would actually be the eighth day. The Passover's over tomorrow night. Con? Oh. Right? Go ahead. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation to you. Come on. No matter of work shall be done. So in tonight them. is the Sabbath also. Only work to be done is work concerning the Passover. Go ahead. Save that which every man must eat. That only may be done of you. Right, that's the only um, type of work to be done, preparation of the feast, right? Come on. And he shall observe the feast of leavened bread. For in this selfsame day have a brought 
your armies. There's armies again. There's the armies again. I brought your armies. Come on. Out of the land of Egypt. Come on. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. Come on. Jump up to uh, verse 29. So remember I said the uh, Passover is about judgment. Come on. Come we, on. we also celebrate judgment during this season. All right. Read what you got, King. 29. And it came to pass... That at midnight, the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. See that? He smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Okay? Okay. Right? That was judgment and that was vengeance. Go to um, whole Exodus 12, 29. Go to Exodus 1. Go to Exodus 1. Let's start at 7. Con, this is the book of Exodus, chapter 1 and verse 7. When everybody have it, say Con. Con. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. Right. See that? No matter what, man, we we ain't baby kids, but we don't <laughs> die. We multiply. Uh, <laughs> Con? Yeah. And when you really look at it, man, a lot of a lot of Israel is having babies. I mean, Israel in the truth. Right. Our people in general, you know, they killing us off, but we still having, you know, we still having babies as we come along. I was gonna say, um, that's the tattoo uh, DMX had tatted on um, his neck, I believe. Yeah. Exodus one and seven. Yeah, actually, yeah, mm -hmm. Exodus one and seven. Come. Mm -hmm. Right. Go ahead. Verse eight. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt. Now, most uh, a lot of scholars say that's Ramses II, but it, it is debatable of which Pharaoh was over uh, Israel at that time. Right? Come on. Which knew not Joseph. Come on. And he said unto his children, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. See that? And that's what's going to start happening now. But now they're going to look at it and say, it's so many of them coming into the truth. There's so many of them waking up to the identity. That's why you have guys like Vocab Malone. And they, their whole mission is to, to try to destroy the doctrine of Israel. Okay. You know, uh, you got a lot of these groups that's camp haters. Their whole mission is to destroy the doctrine of, uh, of uh, Israel mm -hmm. and the, the One West camps. Their whole mission. And I'm like, well, if we're so wrong, just teach our doctrine and... Y'all be right. Everybody gonna follow y'all. Their whole mission is to destroy what what uh and destroy camp doctrine. Mm -hmm. Nah, we go by thus saith the Lord. To the best of our ability, what we see in the scriptures. It's just certain people when when they came into the truth, maybe they come from Christianity or whatever other lifestyle, and when they ran across certain teachers, they spirit short circuited. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I don't wanna um I don't wanna believe in that. But that's what the scriptures say. You can't cherry pick and make the Bible fit you. No, you got to fit into the scriptures. Con, you got to get in where you fit in with the Lord's word. So a lot of people come from different lifestyles and they say, well, I don't want to yell at the white man on the corner. I don't want to do that. I don't want to hate nobody. Right? But they can't deal with those, that bitter part of the scriptures. Con, uh. like uh, uh, John said, it's bittersweet. They can't deal with that bitter part of the scriptures, right? The judgment and the prophecy and the hatred and uh, Yahweh calling Herod a fox. That was like calling him the devil back then. God? God. They can't deal with that part of the scriptures, God? God. So that's when they spirit short circuit and then they get mad at the camps and say, I don't want to be like them. And then they go on a mission to destroy camp doctrine or one west doctrine because they can't deal with the bitterness, the harshness of the scriptures. You can't have emotion when you're dealing with the Bible, you can't, have, you can't bring your emotions into it. It's thus saith the Lord. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right, come on. Come on. Let us deal wisely with them. Come on. Lest I multiply. And it come to pass that when they're falling out of any war, they join also unto our enemies. Come on. And fight against us. And so get them up, up out of the land. We. Really? Therefore... They did set over them taskmasters. That's where they put us in bondage because they said they're getting too mighty and exceeding. They, they're being fruitful and multiplying. Jump down to 22. Verse 22. 
And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. See that? So it said, Every male child of the Israelites throw them in the river <laughs> and save the women, okay? God. So now go to Exodus 12, 29. So the last plague, which was the killing of the firstborn, was what? It was vengeance for the decree that Pharaoh had put out to kill all the firstborn male. Okay? God. Right? Be not deceived, the most high is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. God. He said, listen, you, you, want, you made a decree to kill off all the male children, then I'm going to kill off all your firstborn. Check me. Judgment from the Most High. Okay? By Shimamash. Exodus 12, 29 now. So, Exodus 1 and 22 to link with Exodus 12, 29. Okay? God. It was, it was a vengeance and a judgment for them killing our, our male children. Okay? Throwing them in the river. Con. Right. Revelation 13, 9 and 10. He that leave for the captivity shall go into captivity. Con, because this is modern Egypt. America's modern Egypt. Con? Yeah, Revelation uh, 13, 9 and 10. Con? Uh, Exodus 12, 29. Con, it's the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 29. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. So there you go. Exodus 12, 29 is the vengeance for Exodus 1, 22. Okay? Uh -huh. So the Passover is also about judgment. Come on. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne. See that? No respect to persons. From the top Pharaoh that sat on the throne. Good. Until the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon. So the low, to the lowly Egyptian servant. Come on. And all the firstborn of cattle. The Lord said, and your firstborn of cattle. Kind? So the Lord said, I got y'all back for killing, for throwing my male children of Israel into the river. <coughs> Kind? But we know Moses will save the live to become the savior of Israel. Go to Exodus 15 and 3 now. So Passover is also about judgment. Uh, Exodus 15 and 3. Con, this is the book of Exodus, chapter 15 and verse 3. When everybody have it, say con. Uh -huh. The Lord is a man of war. What does scripture say? The, the Lord, Lord is, is a man, man of war. war. The Lord is a man of war. Come on. The Lord is his name. Come on. Pharaoh's chariots and his host have he have cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. Come on. The depths have covered them. The depths of the water covered them. Come on. They sank. They did what? They, they sank. sank. They sank. Come on. Into the bottom as a stone. It's like you throw a big boulder in the water. What is going to do? Sink to the bottom. <laughs> so when the Egyptians walked across the Red Sea, the water came and sunk them to the bottom and drowned them. God? God. Go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon 19 and 1. So the Passover is about judgment also. Don't forget that. Right? We know we eat the lamb. We remember your Yahawashai, the blood, everything. But it's about judgment too. Okay? Yeah. There's layers. Remember, there's always multiple layers to the feast days. Okay? Yeah. Uh, and uh, remember, a lot of the feast days is centered around judgment. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We got day of uh, Simon Maccabees coming up soon. Mm -hmm. That's about judgment on the Greeks. The, the uh, Maccabees fighting the Greeks. Okay? Yeah. Right? Come on. This is the book of Wizard of Solomon, chapter 19, verse 1. Come on. Everybody have a say, Con. Con. As for the ungodly, wrath came upon them without mercy unto the end. For he knew before that, he knew before what they would do. Good. How that having given them leave to depart. After the Egyptians said, go, man, go. They gave us their gold. They just get out of here. Right? It's, uh, all of our firstborn are dead, man. Get out of here. Right here, take our jewelry, take our precious garments, take everything. Good. And sent them hastily away. They did what? And sent, sent them, them hastily, hastily away. away. Come on. They would repent and pursue them. That after all that, the most I killed your firstborn. You gave us your jewels. So let me hold that, son. Right? You over there crying about you crying about your son, man. Give me them, give me them jewels over there. You in mourning. You don't need that. You don't need to be shining right now. You in mourning. 
Right? Then they pride came back into them and said, no, we're going to go chase them down. Right? Come on. For a while as they were yet mourning and making lamentation at the graves of the dead. Right. All these firstborn in every household dead. Come on. They added another foolish device. They're going to do another foolish device. Come on. And pursued them as fugitives. Come on. Whom they have entreated to be gone. Right, man. Going to chase them like they're fugitives. Right? Like a runaway slave. After the Lord killed your firstborn, like um, Esau, that's where the word patrol come from. Patty rollers during slavery. They had the patty rollers. They would have the poor white trash. Well, that's what the police are. They're the poor white trash to keep the Negroes in check. So during um, slavery, the plantation owners, they would hire the poor white trash Edomites and they would go pursue the runaway slaves. Kind? Yeah. So they the Egyptians pursued us as if we we're fugitives. No. We were not fugitives. We were being exited. We was um, um, departing out of Egypt as free, as a free nation because the most I was delivering us out of bondage. Okay. Here, you want to come run after us like we like we run away slaves, like we fugitives. Right? Come on. Yeah. The hell is this? Harrison Ford? <laughs> right? Go ahead. <laughs> For the destiny whereof they were worthy, drew them unto this end. And made them forget the things that had already happened. Go ahead. That they might fulfill the punishment which was waiting, which was wanting to their torments. Right. And that was all the most high heartening in their hearts so he can judge them. Come on. And that thy people might pass a wonderful way. We passed through a wonderful way. Dry land. Come on. But they might find a strange death. Come on. For the whole creature in his proper kind was fashioned again anew. Come on. Serving the peculiar commandments. Come on. That were given unto them. Go ahead. That thy children might he keep, might he kept without hurt. Right. We was kept without hurt because we obeyed that commandment to put the blood on our doorposts. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Come on. As namely a cloud shadowing the camps. Right. Remember a cloud followed us by day right. and a pillar of fire by night. Come on. And where water stood before. Dry land appeared, and out of the Red Sea a way without impediment. Go ahead. And out of the violent stream a green field. Might meaning there was nothing blocking them from coming across. The Most High rose up the waters and gave them a clear path to walk across the um, Red Sea. Come on. Where through all the people went that were defended with thy hand, seeing thy marvelous strange wonders. Come on. For they went a large like horses and leaped like lambs. Praising thee, O Lord, who have delivered them. They said, look, man, oh, look at them, what the Most High did. All them plagues he brought on the Egyptians. Now he opened up the Red Sea for us to, to pass off and get up out of Egypt. Right? They was rejoicing and, and, and like, look at this miracle. Come on. Right, come on. For they were yet mindful of the things that were done while they sojourned in the strange land. Yeah, they remembered all them, them ten plagues the Most High brought. The three days of darkness, right? You can read about that in uh, Wisdom of Solomon 17. That's some homework for y'all. Read about the three days of darkness. The Egyptians were shook, right? Huh. Passover's about judgment. Y'all can read that on your own, Wisdom of Solomon 17. Read on. How the ground brought forth flies instead of cattle. Right. Remember the most I played them with the flies, right? Good. And how the river cast upon a multitude of frogs. Of frogs. Remember the plague of the frogs? Good. Instead of fishes. Come on. But afterwards, they saw a new generation of fowls. Mm. When being led with their appetite, they asked the delicate meats. Come on. For quails came upon them from the sea for their contentment. So that's it on that. I just want to go right here. Solomon goes a little bit deeper into the dynamics of the Red Sea opening and how Israel was rejoicing and the Egyptians was foolish enough to pursue us after seeing all them, all that destruction, they still going to pursue us and the most high drowned them. Okay? Right. Uh -huh. well, go to um, Hebrews 11.23. So I just wanted to get a few quick verses on... um. You know, the Passover being about judgment. Con? Uh, and many more. Y'all you know, can go more into the dynamics. Read um, Exodus chapters 1 through 11 to read about the 10 plagues and the judgments. Con? Uh, right, but for the sake of time, we're just going to jump into a few more and close it out. Okay. All right. Um, what I call? 
Hebrews 11.23. Hebrews 11.23, Khan. Khan. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and verse 23. When everyone have it, please say Khan. 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 By faith, Moses went. Moses, when he was born, he hid three months. He hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandments. Okay, the water. read it again. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they, they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandments. See, they hit him in the river instead of throwing him in the river. Remember we read that in Exodus 1? Mm -hmm. Instead of throwing um, Moses in the river, they hit him. But that was all prophecy. All right, go ahead. Uh, verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Right, he denounced his position in uh, the Egyptian kingdom. Go ahead. Uh, verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of Yahweh than to enjoy the pleasure of sins for a season. Good. Verse 26. Esteeming, esteeming, esteeming the reproach of Yahweh greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Good. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Right, he knew it was it was gonna be better. You know, in the end, when the Most High give Israel back the kingdom in the latter time, then to, to sell out and have that temporary position with the Egyptians. Go ahead. Uh, verse 27. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Go ahead. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Go ahead. Verse 28. Through faith. He kept the Passover. He did what? He, he kept, kept the, the Passover. Passover. Through faith, he kept the Passover. Go ahead. And the sprinkling of blood. Come on. Lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch him. Go ahead. Verse 29. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as a dried land, by dried land, which the Egyptians assayed to do or drown. Right, which the Egyptians are saying or attempting to do or drown. Karn? So the Passover is about judgment. And that's just, just a few judgments that we read about. Karn? Karn. I go from there to Deuteronomy 16 and 1. Just different random scriptures on the Passover. Judgments, the law... And just different general understanding on the Passover. Uh, Deuteronomy 16 and 1. Uh, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16 and verse 1. When everyone have it, please say, Come. 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 Observing the month of Abib, and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. And we know the land, the uh, month of Bib is our first month. And you know, the scholars tell you it comes around March, April. So we're in the right season. Good. We could debate about the exact date all we want, but at least we're in the right season. Come? Come. Right, good. Verse 2. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy, unto the Lord thy God of the flock and the herd, and the, the herd, the herd, and the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Come on. Verse 3. Thou shalt eat no, un, no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith. And I don't know where this eight days come from. It, the scripture is constantly saying seven. Uh. But you're separating the first night of Passover from the unleavened bread. So you're basically adding an extra day to the Lord's feast. Right? Yeah. Hanukkah is eight days. Tabernacles is eight days, but Passover is seven. Right? Come on. Even the bread of affliction, for thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in hate. Right, we didn't have time to put the dough in the bread, I mean, um, to make the, the yeast in the bread to make it rise. Good. 
that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. Come on. Verse 4. And there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all the coast seven days. Neither shall there anything, neither shall there anything of the flesh with thou sacrifice thee the first day at evening. Remaining all night until the morning. Right, so that, you know, the most I reiterated um, that the lamb got to be eaten up in that night. Go ahead. God, verse 6. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And see, the most I's fair. He said, look, take your lamb according to your counting. Try to estimate how many people and how much lamb you're going to need so you know you don't you don't waste no lamb. It gets eaten up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right? Most I know, most I know a nigga going to say, man, you Cut up some of that lamb and take it home. <laughs> I can eat all that tomorrow for lunch. <laughs> right? So the boss I said, no, get enough for that night and eat it up. Right? Come on. Verse 6. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in. So that's where a lot of Hebrews say, well, where did the Lord place his name at? In Jerusalem. So you can't keep the Passover outside. No, no, just the Seder mill. Serve the Seder meal. We're going to do that over the lamb, the unleavened bread, and um, just put like the uh, lettuce because we ran out of bitter herbs. All right? That was in Whole Foods. I forgot. Right? Go ahead. There thou Not shalt... regular plates yet. No, just the, we're going to do the Seder meal over. Just as a memorial. Right? Go ahead. There thou shalt sacrifice, sacrifice the Passover at evening. At the going down of the sun, at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. Verse 7. And thou shalt roast and eat it in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt turn in the morning and go unto thy tent. Go ahead. Verse 8. Why does it say go into our tents? Simeon? We're in the wilderness, kind. So the first 41 Passovers was in the wilderness. So how could we not keep the Passover outside of Jerusalem? When the first one was in Egypt. Kind. So they do ever not knowing the scriptures or the power of the Most High. Right, come on. Six, verse 8. Six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread. And on the seventh day thou shalt be a solemn assembly. That's what we have in tonight, a solemn assembly. A true or righteous gathering. Come on. To the Lord thy God, thou shalt do no work therein. Right, no work except for the feast. Kind? Kind. Go to um, uh, 1 Ezra and the Apocrypha, 1 and 1. 1 and 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. So there are many layers to the Passover. Kind? Kind. You can read all these scriptures. Uh, kind? Kind. Need a better kind than that. <laughs> right? So, there's many layers. When you're going over the Passover each year, study these different layers, kind? Because you don't want to get, you don't want to get, oh, it's just the lamb and we got to eat that bitter thing and we drink wine and we get the fancy garments and we went out this big hall and I got to give money and, you know, the elders on my back. <laughs> no. It's 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 depth to our feast days. Okay? Uh, right, go ahead. Uh, first Ezra's on other. First Ezra's one and one in the Apocrypha. This is the book of First Ezra's chapter one and verse one. When everyone have it, say huh? Khan. Khan. And Josias held the feast of the Passover in Jerusalem unto his Lord. And offered the Passover the 14th day of the first month. Right, so Josiah held a, a very memorable Passover in the history of Israel. Good. Verse 2. Having set, the, having set the priests according to their daily courses, being arrayed in long garments. See that? So we're not no power rangers, man. The priests of the Most High had their long garments on mm -hmm. with their girdles around them. Right, good. Having set the priests according to their daily courses, being arrayed in long garments in the temple of the Lord. Go ahead. Verse 3. 
and he and he spake unto the Levites, the holy ministers of Israel, that they shall hallow themselves unto the Lord to set the holy ark of the Lord in the house that King Solomon, the son of David, had built. Come on. Verse 4. And said, Ye shall no more bear the ark upon your shoulders. Now, there are, now therefore serve thy, thy Lord your God and minister unto his people Israel and prepare you after your families and kindreds. Verse 5. According to according as David the king of Israel prescribed, and according to the magnificence of Solomon his son, and standing in the temple according to the seven dignities, several dig dignity, se several dignity of the families of you, the Levites who ministered in the presence of your brethren, the children of Israel. Go ahead. Verse eight. I mean, verse six. Offer the Passover in order. And make ready to sacrifice for your brethren, and keep the Passover according to the commandment of the Lord, which was which was given unto Moses. Jump down to fourteen. Kind of no, jump down to nineteen. Kind of Verse nineteen. Y'all can read the rest. Y'all can read seven through. Uh, just letters on the plate, y'all. That's it for now. Right. Go ahead. Kind of. Verse nineteen. So the children of Israel, which were, which were present, held the Passover at that time, and the Feast of Sweet Bread, seven days. Right, so we held the Passover at that time, and the Feast of Sweet Bread, right? They called it Sweet Bread. I don't know, maybe we put some honey on it, or maybe we added some wine to the batter. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> man, put some flavor on that bread, man. <laughs> Con? Uh, they did something to make the bread sweet. It don't really specify, but they did something to make it sweet. God? God. Anybody find any history or anything on that, let me know. All right. I know we got the scholars amongst us. God? God. Right. Go um, go from there. Y'all can read uh, 1 to 22. It deals with the special Passover that Josiah's held for Israel. All right. But I just want to get to the main point. Um, Go from there to Acts 12. And when let me know when everybody got a plate in front of them. Acts 12. Acts 12 and 1. Okay? Time. So you see is 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 much um is much depth to the Passover. Okay? Time. Right? Give me um Acts 12 and 1. Khan, this is the book of Acts, chapter 12 and verse 1. When everyone have it, should you say Khan? Khan. Khan. Now about that time, Parag, the king, stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Verse 2. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Right. See, a lot of our, uh, the disciples were martyred, all right, for the gospel's sake. Come on. Verse 3. And because he saw... He, he saw it please the Jews. Right. The wicked Jews that was against the church, they were happy when um the disciples and, and the followers of Yahweh were being um martyred. Right. Come on. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Which is a Passover, of course. Come on. Verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four... Quartonians. of soldiers. Four Quartonians is uh, 16 soldiers. A Quartonia, Quartonian ex consisted of four uh, Roman soldiers. Right, go ahead. Con. So 16 soldiers they had to uh, guard Peter. Con? Con. Just like now, you know, you had that wild Jake from the hood. And then when somebody called the cops on him, the whole precinct come. Con. Right? Because the precinct know that nigga crazy. Right, we done locked him up like 20 times. They sent the whole precinct down. Okay. We're going to call who acting up? Right, Khan? <laughs> right, go ahead. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter 
to after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now, when you go into Greek, it says Pesach because it's supposed to, it's, it's Passover. Uh -huh. Fine. Uh -huh. The days of unleavened bread is not Easter. But another way you can look at it too is it was Easter for the Romans. Con? Because a lot of times their Easter falls around our... If, if it's not a leap year, a lot of times Easter and Passover falls around the same time. When you have a leap year, the Easter will be... Like Easter was in March this year. Con? Whenever you have the so-called leap year. But in, um, in, uh, in, whenever it's not a leap year, they will kind of fall around the same time. Because a lot of times, like, the children will be out for spring break and it'll be Passover. You'll be like, yeah, good. The children are off while it's Passover time, so I can make sure they don't eat no leaven. Kai? Right? Uh, bring it out. And also, when you look at the word Easter, Easter is actually the pagan name for Ishtar. Kai. Kai. So, um, but the translation is wrong. It's supposed to, it says Pesach or Pesach in the Greek. Kai? Right, come on. Uh, that's it on that. All right, okay. that's it on that. Go to um Acts 20 now. Acts 12 and 20 or chapter 20? Acts uh, 20. Okay, come on. And um, let me see what I want. Uh, Uh, Acts 20 and 6. This is the book of Acts, chapter 20 and verse 6. When everyone have it, please say, huh? Uh. And when he sailed away from Philippi, after the days of unleavened bread. Right, and we sailed away from Philippi after oh, okay. the days of unleavened bread. Go ahead. After the days of unleavened bread, to come unto them to... And came okay. unto them came to Troas to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. Right, Philippi. That's where you uh, get the book of Philippians from. Israelites in the land of Philippi. Uh, okay? uh, and what they were doing, they were keeping the days of unleavened bread. Uh, so it's showing you what? Throughout different time frames, we was keeping the law of the Most High. And in different lands, we were still keeping the law of the Most High. Okay? Uh, uh, right? Um... Uh, Everybody got their meal yet? Not yet? Kind. Almost two more? Okay, go to uh, Genesis 19. There's different, different uh, layers to look at the Passover. And Genesis 19. And um, I want the verse with a... Um, cook for the angels. Mm. Somebody say something for a minute. Con. Three. Huh? Three. three. Yeah. Genesis 19 and 3. So like you start at 1 to get the understanding. Genesis 19 and 1. Con. This is the book of Genesis chapter 19 and verse 1. When everyone have it, please say con. 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 And there came two angels to... Oh, right, make sure everybody get wine or grape juice. If you're not drinking, get some grape juice. All right, go ahead. Con, Elder. The book of Genesis, chapter 19 and verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lot sat in the gate of, of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. Come on. Verse 2. And he said, Behold, now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, unto your yeah, servants' give us some houses, fancy cups. <laughs> unto your servants' houses, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide, we will abide in the streets all night. Verse 3. And he pressed upon the upon them greatly, and they turned they turned in unto him, and entered into the house. And he made them a feast, and did and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Right. So it's not like unleavened bread was unfamiliar to us. You know, we did bake flat bread, and then sometimes we bake bread. 
you know, that was uh, with dough in it, con. Uh -huh. And they made this for the angels. They was like, look, man, we want to hang out. That's a Jake spirit. And we're going to hang out all night in the city. <laughs> and I said, no, not here. Y'all don't want to hang out all night here. Yo, come in the crowd. I'm going to make y'all a feast. We're going to chill. You don't want to hang out all night here. Good? Uh, not no damn Sodom. <laughs> Good? Uh, so unleavened bread, you know, just to go back into history, was part of, uh, you know. So we did, you know, we were not unfamiliar with it. We did make it. And eat it. Con? Uh -huh. All right. Uh, go from there to St. John 2. I think we're almost ready. Almost ready. St. John 2. And, um... St. John 2 and 13. Read that. Con, this is the book of St. John's chapter 2 and verse 13. When everyone has it, please say con. Con. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Yahweh went up to Jerusalem. Verse 14. And found in the temples those that sold oxen and sheep and doves, and the, the, the changes of money sent. Verse 15. And when he had made a scourge of small, of small cords, he, he drove them all out of the temple. And the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes money and overthrew the table. Yeah, man, y'all hustling in the temple during Passover season. Mm. Get up out of here, man. Make a weapon and whoop these dudes up out of here. No. Con? Right, come on. Verse 16. And said, Israel is wicked, man. <laughs> Damn, no, no regard for Passover season. Right, you know, as a new year and it's Passover, so Israel's like, yo, I need my doves to get these sins off, man. It's a new year, son. Yo, let me get my doves, man. Con? Right, go ahead. Verse 16. And said unto them, that sold doves, take these things hence. Make my make not my father's house and house of merchandise. Man, don't be hustling in my father's house. It's Passover season. Y'all cats up in here. Y'all spirit and mine is in the wrong place. Right? Come on. Uh, verse seventeen. And his disciples remembered remembered that it was written, the zeal of thy house had eaten me up. Right. That's uh Psalms. Uh, I think that's Psalm sixty eight. If I'm not mistaken, the zeal of thine house have eaten me up. Meaning, Yahweh Shai was so angry because they was, you know, polluting the Most High's house during the Passover season. That's like uh, Matthias Maccabees. Remember, said, um, I'm paraphrasing, but he couldn't hold his anger back. And he went and he slew the, uh, the king's messenger on the altar because he came and sacrificed swine on the altar. That's the same thing. The zeal of the Most High's house that ate up Yahweh Shai. These niggas up in here hustling. In my father's temple during the Passover season. Yo, man, give me something. Stop whooping niggas up out of here, okay? It's the same spirit like Matthias Maccabees when he went and slew the king's messenger. He made that nice long speech. Here come this nigga. He's going to put a, a, a barbecue spare rib on the damn altar. Okay? I don't care what that nigga say. I'm putting my pork up here. And Matthias was like, I went and killed them right there. And that's where the Maccabean Revolution started. Okay? Oh. So same spirit with Yahweh Shah. So uh, Leviticus 23, we're going to close out. Leviticus 23 and 4. Okay, right, so different layers to the Pesach. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Different layers to the Passover. Right? Leviticus 23 and 4. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 4. Man, don't y'all be feeling like that sometime? God, you see God. certain wickedness how people doing? Yep. God, like, God. God. You know what I'm saying? Or, or when we in the camp and we teach and they want to fight us for trying to teach them the truth. Oh, I'm going to kill it nigga right now. I'm trying to help you. God. And you want to hurt and kill me because I'm trying to help you. God. Right? Come on. God, the book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, 
even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Verse 5, in the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Come on. Verse 6. So see the importance is verse 4. Ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Con? Con. That's what's important. As long as you're keeping a Passover in the wood. March, April season, you're pretty good. Anything before or after that, you kind of out of season. Con? Con. So I'm not debating. I'm not getting into an endless debate, a five-paragraph comment back and forth about the right day of the Passover. Con? Con. Long as it's in the right season from your calculations. We have to say that every year. Come on. Con. Verse 6. On the... On the 14th and on the 14th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Read the, um, the um, five again. Verse five. And the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. The 14th day of the first month is actually at even is the 15th day. The closing of the, as the sun is going down, is going into the 15th day. So this way it gets tricky too with the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Go ahead. Con. Verse 6. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now the reason why it's worded like that because it's let you the, the sixth verse is letting you know it's actually the 15th day. Con. And he's saying the, on the same day is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's one and the same. Brothers, read this and think it's talking about two separate days. Con. Con. That's where the eight day confusion come in. But... The Seder meal is lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herb. You're eating unleavened bread on the Passover. Go ahead. Go ahead. So it starts that night. Right? Go ahead. Verse 6. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Right? It could have easily said eight days. Right? Or it, it calculated eight. Everywhere you read about the Passover is seven days. The most high specific. Come on. Verse 7. In the first day, ye shall have an holy convocation. Right, that beautiful gathering we had last God. Sunday night. God. Go ahead. God. Ye shall do no severe work therein. Come on. Verse 8. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. There it goes. Seven, seven, seven. Mm -hmm. You don't see no eight. Come on. In the seventh day. Is that beautiful gathering we have tonight. Go ahead. God. In the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no severe work therein. Serve our work meaning work for hire. The only work is to be done is for the feast. Con? So on the first day you have a holy convocation, and the seventh day you have a holy convocation to the Most High. A beautiful one at that. Con? It's a little late, but that's Negroes for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> CP T Hebrew time. Right? Um, but uh, that's it. You you have the uh, feast for seven days in its season. Con? Con. It's, it's, not, it's not that deep. It's, it's, it's deep, but it's not that deep, right? The most I said, uh, write the vision and make it plain upon tables. So he that readeth it may run. You may understand and teach others. Hey, come keep the Passover. This is how we do it. It's hard for you because you don't know, but it's easy once you learn it. Every year it gets, eat, you know, it's the Passover. This is what we do. It becomes robotic. Con? Con. 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 Any questions or comments? I know it's late, Israel, but let's hang on out. Con? Uh -huh. It's a Saturday night. It's the weekend. Everybody's mostly off. Let's hang on out and take this closing out with a bang. Con? Con. Uh -huh. So any more questions or comments? Is it hot in here or is it just me? It's hot. Huh? It's hot. Uh, yeah. Come on now. We don't want to have a repeat of Sunday. Everybody all right? We have to crack that door a little bit. Con? Con. Oh, yeah, by the way, that sister's fine. The family's okay. Oh, and um, praises. Oh, praises. they will be a uh, most I will join in HOI. Come on. Yeah, that was a uh, husband, husband, yeah. wife, yeah. daughter, wife's mother, and I'm not sure who the other family member was. But um, they loved the way the brothers responded. You know, and um, all praises. So, all praises for that. Con? Uh, so, the work goes on, right? The most I take of away, the most I give of. Come in, Shadow. Come in, Shadow. All right, so um, we're going to close out um, the next feast day. Somebody look up the calendar soon.
The new moon is on uh what? We got May seventh. May seventh. May seventh. All right. The next feast day is the new moon, May seventh. After that, I believe is day of Simon Maccabees. I believe that's May. May twenty ninth. Uh, May twenty Yeah, day of Simon Maccabees, May twenty ninth. The next new moon, uh, what third month? Uh, no, second month. Second so like month. new moon, second month will be May seventh. Time. Right at even. What day is that? Uh, no, what day of the week? Yeah, Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday. Okay. Time. Tuesday, May seventh, and then um the day of Simon Maccabees is May 29th. What day is that? 29th is, is a, a Wednesday. A Wednesday. Con. All right, and then um look up first fruits. Uh, that that should be, be like the second week of June. That'll be the 15th of June. June 15th. Con. So um. That's since that's on a Saturday. Uh, I'm gonna talk to Kasaja. We might get a spot for Northeast, so we can you know keep this uh, momentum going. Uh, DMV, Philly, New York, and New Jersey. Me and Kasaja will try to get together and get a spot for First Fruits, uh, so we can all come together. Kai, Kai, Come Shala, Come Shala. Um, I don't think here, OG, we're gonna need some more room. We're gonna need more room. <laughs> <laughs> It's all love, OG. But this spot, this spot, this spot does the trick, man. It does the trick. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, Ashar, Pasak, happy closing of Passover uh, 2024. We did it! Yeah. Yeah. All we got to do is make it through the next couple of hours, and we did it. 2024. Okay? Yeah. Oh, praise to you. How are you? How was Shah? It was... Uh, it was crazy this year, but uh, we did it. Khan? Khan. Most I brought it together, and um, it came out even much better than I thought. Khan. Khan. I love it when a plan comes together even better than how you planned it. Khan. Khan. Right? Yeah. Philly did the thing this year. Khan. Right? Khan. 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 So um, all praises. Um, and we're going to, um, you know, we're going to continue to remove the leaven. Right, um, we're gonna put you know all the nonsense behind us and move forward, which we've done already. But um, it's officially you know after t uh, tomorrow Sunday the Passover is over, so let's just keep moving into the new year in the right spirit and uh, leaving everything behind and pushing forward. Khan, no pettiness, no nonsense, just just push forward. Khan, let that stuff go and um. And keep it moving, Khan. And that's yeah. everything. That's not one thing, two. That's everything, Khan. Yeah. So nobody think you picking on them. But it's everything. Let it go. Move forward and build. And let's get this kingdom, Khan. Come yeah. inshallah. Come inshallah. All right. So um, I ain't got no shofar man with me. It was Kasaja? Uh, I should have one. So we're gonna uh, close out in prayer. And um, eat the meal, and then fellowship, eat, drink, and be merry. Come on, shout Come on, shout All right. We'll command everybody to stand. Um, Jerusalem, stand and face Jerusalem or the east. Can anybody check on her now? Repeat the Hebrew only. Right. Bless are you, how that gives us the fruit of the vine. Barakat the Yahawa. Ahawa Ah. Bethelanawa. Akwaya. Hagapan. Bashem. Shalomashiach. Yahawashah. 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 Y
Blessed are you, Yahweh, that gives us the law. Baraka to Yahweh. Blessed are you, Yahweh, that gives us the light to see. Baraka to Yahweh. Blessed are you, Yahweh, that gives us the ram's horn to call the people. Baraka to Yahweh. Wakwara, Haim, Bashum, Hamashia, Yahabasha, the water, the water, <clears throat> Blessing of Israel throughout the four corners of the earth. Yahweh. Yahweh. Bashem. Bashem. Mashiach. Mashiach. Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai. Rachnawah. 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 Sisters, come up, get anointed. Get your oil, get a single file line or two if you have to make it. Make it. Make it. Make it. Sisters, huh? Stand back there. Yeah. I want your oil. Definitely. Put it on top back there. Fine. Fine. That's all the sisters. Fine. All right. We're gonna uh, say her non-name too. She's supposed to be here. She's gonna say it last. She got jacked up. Hmm? I'm going to say last, yeah. All right, y'all sisters, y'all know the routine. Anointing prayer, number 622 to 27. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, as we pray over y'all, ask the most high for blessings, strength. Make you a better sister, first and foremost. Better off woman of the most high. Mother, daughter, wife, whatever title you hold. Um, whatever you're going through. Any pain, suffering, ailments, job. Just different things you want the most how to help you with. Meditate on those things as we pray over y'all. Say the prayer. Go from right to left. Say your name three times. We repeat it. You get your anointing. Hello, y'all. Hello, uh, Just the brothers on the panel. Um, repeat after me. Anointing prayer. Ancient Paleo Hebrew. Number 622 to 27. 
Ya Baraki Yahweh, Ya Shamarka, Ya Ah Yahweh, Ya Salak Ya Pan Yahweh, Al Yaka, Ya Khan Ka, Ya Sha Yahweh, Pan Yahweh, Al Yaka, Ya Shamlaka, Shalom, Ya Hawah, Ya Shim, Mashiach, Ya Hawshai, Hob Kusha, Shemai, Nawa, Aita, Shalak, Makala, Alahayim, La, Shema'el, Barak, Rapa, Aiza, Magun, Kazak, Atazayel, Kwawa, Janiah, 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 Haziana Yasha, Haziana Yasha. Haziyana Ayasha. Haziyana Ayasha. Haziyana Ayasha. Haziyana Ayasha. Tapala. Amani. 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 Hana. 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 Oh no, wait. Salaki. Salaki got y'all. Aitiano first. Aitiano. 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 Grace. Grace. Grace, hope, 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 faith, 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 Yash, 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 Sabalana, 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 Hana, 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 Ko, Ko, Akium, Akium, Ko, Ko, Aquafium, Aquafium, Ko, Ko, Bunyum, Bunyum, Yashala, Yashala, Bashim, Bashim, Amashia, Amashia, Yahusha, Yahusha, the water, the water, the yard, the ram, I will own, I will own, ah, man, ah, man, hallelujah, 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 Homisha, Sisters, be seated, quiet, please. Brothers, come up, get anointed. We're still in prayer mode. All right. Y'all can, hey, sis, you look nice. Later. <laughs> All right, you up now? You up now? Come on up, brothers, don't be shy. Make a line to the best of your ability. Line up. All right, that's all the brothers. No, I right, say anything, anointing prayer, brothers. Y'all know the routine. Um, as we praying over y'all, ask the most how to bless y'all, help y'all out in any affliction y'all going through, make y'all a better first and foremost man of the most high, father, son, brother, husband. Any affliction you're going through, meditate on it as we praying over you. Go from right to left, from Josh's son across to Simeon. Um, say your name three times when we finish the prayer. We repeat it and you receive your anointing. Anointing prayer number 622 to 27. Hallelujah. Ya Bareki Yahawa. Ya Ya Shamarka. Ya Ah Yahawa. Pan Yahawa. Al Yaka. Ya Ya Khan Ka. Ya Sha Ah Yahawa. Pan Yahawa. Al Yaka. Ya Shamlaka. Shalom. Ya Hawa. Ya Shem. Ya Mashiach. Ya Hawshai. Ya Kusha. Shemai. Nawa. Aita. Shalak. Magala. Magala. Alahayim. 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 Al
Barak, Barak Rapa, Rapa Isaiah, Magun, Magun, Kazak, Kazak, Hatazayah, Hatazayah, Kawa, Kawa, Ishala, 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 Isaiah, 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 Joshua, 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 Amawala, 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 Yahawada, 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 Everybody stand face to east again. Pray for the food and the drink. Hallelujah. I can remain standing so y'all can be seated. Everybody got their plate in front of them? Get your staff. Yeah. All right. Uh, give me Exodus 12 and 8. Uh, the state of mill is not mandatory for the closing. That's just a tradition that, you know, HOI did over the years. Uh, we still did it on the closing. Um, but, uh, you know, on the, on the closing, we can eat regular food. The Seder meal is really for the opening night. Kind? Kind. Um, but we just do it as a memorial on the closing also. Kind? Kind. Exodus 12 and 8. Anybody? This is the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 8. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Read on. This is verse 9. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. Go ahead. Verse 10. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. Well, tonight, if there's any lamb left over, y'all can take it. <laughs> it's the closing. Good? Yeah. We ain't going to let it go to waste tonight. You either got to... Uh, Make no Sunday dinner. You have something more already. Cut. Uh, so uh, let's eat the Seder meal again. La Yahawa. La Yahawa Shai. La Yashaala. La Pesach. Haloya. Haloya. Like we had to substitute the letters for the herbs. Huh? See, 
Everybody save a small piece of bread. Yeah. So we can do the remembrance of Yahweh Shai. Wow. It's 144, y'all. <laughs> Come? Come. Uh -huh. So eat everything else other than the bread. Huh? Eat everything other than some of the bread. No, just eat, just save a piece of bread. Exactly. Can't make this up, 144. Uh -huh. Uh, everybody get uh, some more wine. Or well, if you got some in your cup still. We got to do the remembrance of Yahweh Shai. Or well, grape juice. <laughs> if you got a little wine left over, it's okay. But if you don't have none in your glass, then get some. And everybody saved a little piece of bread, right? Yeah. All right, give me Matthew 26. Matthew 26 and 1. Yeah, 144, you can't make this up. God, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 26 and verse 1. And it came to pass when Hamashiach Yehawashah had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Yea, know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Jump down to 6. Verse 6. Now when Hamashiach was in Bethany, in the house of Simeon the leper, there came upon, there came unto him a woman having a, 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 a alabaster. alabaster, alabaster box of very precious ointment. This woman was Mary Magdalene. Go ahead. And poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Hamashiach understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she have poured his ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever this gospel shall be preached in the world, the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman have done, be told for a memorial of her. Good. Good. So we remember Mary Magdalene. Come here, shout out. Come Come here, shout out. Right, jump down to 26. Yahweh Shah said, wherever this gospel is preached, you always remember Mary Magdalene. Come Come right, uh, 26, 26. Verse 26. And as they were eating, Hamashiach took bread and blessed it, and break it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Everybody have a piece of bread. La Yahweh. La Yahweh. La Yahweh Shai. La Yahweh Shai. La Yahweh Shai. La Yahweh La Pasak. La Pasak. La Kum Yahweh Shai. La Kum Yahweh Shai. Bread of Yahweh Shai. Bread of Yahweh Shai. Body of Yahweh Shai. Body of Yahweh Shai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think good. <laughs> you have a sop in Itiano. Y'all got the unleavened bread detail each year. <laughs> God. God, that's right, fellow. God. <laughs> All right, read on. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, 
which is shed for many for the remnants of sins. Remission. Remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in the Father's kingdom. Can, we, we, can we imagine uh, sitting down with your house shy, uh, drinking uh, some wine? Uh, that's right. You know what that wine going to taste like? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Bring it out. Warm your Is more than that? Gone. No, I, I, no, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> They got sidetracked. I'm waiting for that game. So like your Akim, but your Howard Shah, he gonna way outdo Rashi Hak. So like your Howard. I know that's our word. Good. Right? Like your Howard. Like your Howard. Like your Howard Shah. Like your Howard Shah. Like your Shah. Like your Shah. Like your Shah. Like your Shah. Dumb your Howard Shah. Dumb your Howard Shah. Bloody your Howard Shah. Bloody your Howard Shah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of it. So, um, give me First Corinthians five, seven, and eight. We gotta just put this out there. Everybody, you know, we read um First Corinthians eleven on the opening about eating the Passover in sincerity. You can go back over that. Tomorrow during the day is still the seventh day of Passover. You can study. You know. Still eat some unleavened bread. Be in the spirit till sundown. All right? Sundown, I know y'all running to get a hoagie. Yeah. <laughs> Read, right? <laughs> Ten pizza pies. <laughs> right? First Corinthians 5 and 7. Oh, God. This is the book of First Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump. So as, uh, like I was bringing out in the lesson yesterday, the live I did, the purging of leaven is a continual process. Don't, you know, like the Day of Atonement. Don't just fast for your sins one day and then don't keep, you know, asking the Most High for forgiveness and fasting throughout the year for sins also. Okay? Mm -hmm. So continue to purge the leaven. Okay? Mm -hmm. We all may have some of that leaven in us. We all, all of us. Okay? Mm -hmm. Continue to get it out. It's a continual process. You know, Passover's over. Okay, I'm going to bring the leaven back in. No. Is a continual process. The rest of the year, keep getting the leaven out. Keep getting it out. Con? Right. right, good. As ye are unleavened for every Hamashiach, our Passover. For uh, even Hamashiach, Yahawashai. Uh, good. Our Passover is sacrificed for us. Right. Yahawashai sacrificed himself for us to purge out the leaven. For us to get forgiven for our sins. Con? Uh. Right, come on. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Uh, and we kept the feast by Shema Mashiach. Go ahead. Not with old leaven. Not with the old leaven. Get rid of that old leaven. And you know, you know, some stuff is still up inside you. Keep purging it out as the year goes on. Go ahead. And HOI, man, let's be better this year. We got, a, we got a lot of work still to do, man. Go ahead. A lot of work still need to be done. Come on. Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. Get rid of that malice and wickedness, man. Let it go. Let it go. All right? If it's not, you know, something that need to be dealt with in the spirit, let it go, man. Right? Let all the folly, everything go. Come on. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So let's get sincere and let's teach this truth. Okay? Right. Focus on the mission. Everything else is null and void. Come on. I wrote unto you in an epistle... Not to company with fornicators. Yet not. What verse you in? Verse 9. No, that's it. I just wanted 7 and 8. God? God. God. So, let us keep the feast. Let us go on in Hamashiach Yahushai. God? God. Just give me one last one. Joshua 5 and 10. Joshua chapter 5. I believe it's verse 10. Yeah, 5. I believe it's 10. God? God. Hallelujah. Let that air in. God. <laughs> God, look, run a run a run a train through here, man. That's that's how you cool it off. You get that train going. Con? Yeah. Oh. Joshua five and ten. Con, this is the book of Joshua, chapter five and verse ten. And the children of Israel encamped in Jagel, 
and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at even the plains of Jericho. And they did eat the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover. Right, so, you know, they incorporated different foods and stuff after the morrow of the Passover, the corn, and, and Apocrypha said the sweet bread. I'm, I'm still wondering what did Israel add to that bread? <laughs> right? But, um, you know, after the first night, that's the same meal required. You can eat other foods. And remember, Israel, you can eat anything as long as it don't have leaven. Khan? Khan. I just want to say, uh, um, not to keep, but, you know, we've been through a lot this past year, Khan, with everything, right? Like I said, not just with certain things, with everything, but the water to all you brothers and sisters, y'all stood firm, y'all stood ten toes down. You know, y'all kept the faith, and uh, we made this Passover happen. Come, come, come. shimmer my shot. Come. Shimmer my shot. Come. 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 And um, I want to thank everybody for what they did, man. You know, everybody worked tirelessly, man. I mean, I know I was, I, I think I slept for like three days straight after the Passover. Because it was a lot of work, man. Back and forth to Philly. I think I know Philly better than the Philly people now. I, I know the damn septa, I know the buses, I know the every damn thing, man. I was in Philly like I lived there. Because I'm hands on, man. I like to make sure I got to be on top of things. And I don't care. I'm like Karis One. I don't care as long as I get there. Had to go look at these venues, and you know, we're not just gonna rent any place. I gotta see where we're gonna be at. Gun? Late nights, waiting for him to come meet me. Yo, what's up? Where you at? Oh, I'm stuck in traffic. Yo, I gotta see this place we're gonna be at, man. Where you at? So, a lot of work, man. Gun? And Philly ain't the most friendly city, so, you know, but, um,